you just came home from work, you're super busy at work, you've got a big work project, one of your colleagues gives you some sort of sob story or tries to guilt you into doing extra work that you don't want to do. Or maybe you just were hanging out with some friends or maybe even your partner and you got guilt tripped into feeling badly about something and then doing something for somebody else that you kind of knew you should not be doing, that you are being manipulated into doing, yet you can't manage those feelings of guilt or whatever it is that cause you to agree to things that you know are not something you should be agreeing to. Chances are you also can relate to a moment where you've done that to somebody else, okay? If you're human, I'm sure you've done that at some point. None of us are perfect, that's okay. In today's video, we are gonna explore guilt tripping. We are going to explore emotional manipulation and how people use that against us and maybe even how we may use that against other people. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. I'm a therapist, a mindfulness teacher, a public speaker, and somebody in long-term recovery from addiction and mental illness. And all these videos are really just to help you increase your capacity for resilience and well-being and to navigate the world a little bit more the way you want to. So back to the guilt tripping. Another clear example might be you're hanging out with your family. Maybe it's a sibling, a parent, a cousin comes up to you and says, you know, you should really come to these family gatherings more often. Mom's really sad that you don't make more of an effort. And maybe that's coming from your dad or your mom, whoever it is, okay? And you just get that pang of guilt and irritation and frustration and blah. Oh, and you kind of, you don't know what to do. You know it's not okay find yourself a little bit confused and perhaps you make a decision that you will regret. The first thing we want to start to do is to start to pause or to practice pausing in these moments or even in reflection of these moments. For many of us, it's hard to act on the spot, especially when we don't have practice. So perhaps just grab a piece of paper or consider, okay, what are situations upon which I am being guilt tripped or manipulated through guilt to do something I don't want to do. So just get a bit of space from that. Wow, here's a situation where that's happening. I know I acted in a way I didn't want to act. And I know in the future, I don't want to do that again. Or maybe even you want to address a situation that happened recently where you were guilt tripped into doing something you don't want to do. So just clarify that first. Okay. What's the situation? Where did it go wrong? Do I want to address it? Or do I just want to develop some skills to reduce it from happening again? Once you have a bit of that clarified in your mind, okay, or on paper, we're going to start building one of the first skills, if you will, staying on our side of the street. What do I mean by that? We are responsible for our behavior. We are not responsible for other people's behavior and we are not responsible for other people's feelings. That is really important. I would say we are responsible to treat people with dignity and respect and honesty. Nevertheless, if they react negatively to us saying no, that's not our problem. And this is where guilt trippers and manipulative people, I don't like throwing a around the word narcissist, but you could use that here. This is where people use our own moral integrity against us. And maybe they're doing it unconsciously. I don't know. It doesn't actually matter. What matters is that you remember you're not responsible for their behavior. You're not responsible for their feelings. You are responsible to be assertive and act with honesty and integrity. So that's our side of the street. What did I do? What did I agree to? How did I behave? What can I control, right? Okay. To whatever extent you can, you have influence and agency over your own choices and behavior. Okay. So for example, sibling comes and says, you don't spend much time with mom and dad. They feel badly about that. What's wrong with you? If you just spent more time with us, they'd be happier. Now, whether that's manipulation through the parents or who knows what your sibling's trying to get out of that, 
doesn't matter, okay? Your part in this, is I choose when I spend time with mom or dad. If mom or dad wants me to spend more time with them, then they need to come and talk to me about it. Or you could just be a bit more straight up. Don't dump your emotional shit on me, okay? I don't need to hear this from you. That that gets, uh, I'm jumping ahead a wee little bit, okay, into the assertiveness part of this or the communication part of it. But that's just an example, right? Or a colleague comes in and says, I'm swamped with work and I know we're working on this project together. I have these few tasks. I know you're finished your work, but oh, I would really like it. I would really like it if you could just help me with these other few tasks, or is it possible that you could just help me finish this other task or whatever that sort of whiny, oh, I'm so sad or whatever. Can you help me kind of idea? Now, we're not trying to remove this idea of being loving and compassionate and helpful to people. Okay. That's not what this is about. This is about when clearly we're being manipulated or when people are being unreasonable and you can tell they're trying to guilt trip you into something that you don't want to do or you know that you should not be doing. So again, in those moments, we need to remember this line, okay? We're not responsible for the fact that they feel sad and that they haven't taken responsibility for their problems and not done their work. So again, separating that out, okay? Then you have a choice. You know what? I'm sorry you are in this predicament. I have other things to do. I've done my part in this. You know, maybe I'll help you another time, but today I can't help you. I'm sorry about that. And end of story, okay? End of story. Often people will jump in with more excuses or rationalizations, or they'll try to stick their claws into you even more. Oh, you never helped me. Or, oh, they'll you know, play some victim story or some sob story. And again, our practice is back inward. I'm not responsible for this person's crap. I'm responsible for my behavior. I've done everything I can. I'm acting ethically and responsibly, and I'm treating them with respect, and I'm choosing not to do this. Okay, a lot of these boundary issues often do come from family of origin or childhood issues or whatever it is, relationship traumas and problems. This video is not about getting into that stuff, although that can be helpful. This is really about clarifying again, where's the boundary? What's my side of the street? Can I say my piece with respect or to the best of my ability and constantly put up that boundary whenever somebody tries to cross it again and to dump onto us? I think I've made that clear. I hope I've made that clear. Please like this video if you find it helpful. Comment, share it, subscribe, and even consider supporting us on Patreon. That would be greatly appreciated. To sum up the video, remember, stay on our side of the street. Notice when people try to jump onto our side and manipulate us with their feelings, their emotions, their projections. Again, setting that assertive or compassionate boundary, but just saying, no, I am not responsible for your feelings. I'm responsible for mine and I'm responsible for my behavior. And every time that person jumps and tries to weasel their way into our side of the street, again, that boundary comes up firm, assertive, straightforward. No secrets here. It's the repetition of this pattern. When we get better at this, people then start to realize they can't manipulate us. They may still try a little bit, or they may still try to guilt trip us. And if we are consistent or disciplined in this approach, they will go and try to do it to someone else and they will start to leave us alone, ideally. If they don't, that's another opportunity for you to practice all these things and to set more firm, more strict boundaries, if you will. Remember, taking care of yourself when it's done honestly and ethically and virtuously, so to speak, that is the right thing to do. That is being a good person. So I wish you the best on your journey in navigating guilt tripping people in learning to set more assertive boundaries in taking care of your well-being. It's a rinse and repeat. It's a practice. None of us are perfect. Okay. I hope you found that helpful. I wish you all the best. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.